All right, well, welcome back to another Keller Customs Garage episode here today. We are working on our favorite project, and that is Felix the Helix. Now, Felix is a 1979 Toyota pickup, and it currently has a solid axle from the original truck and an IFS rear end, which makes the rear end three inches wider. To compensate for that on the front end, you generally speaking run one and a half inch spacers. If you don't like the spacers, which we don't, we want a better alternative. There is a product out there to take off those spacers and get the same width as the rear. Let's follow along. taking the rotors off very simple in this just like a standard vehicle on anything else and that you want to tear down the axle nearly as far this is just going to be better set up for us for Felix and we're going to fix some other areas that we kind of rushed through to get the truck running so let's open it up Now, Front Range Off-Road is located here in Colorado, Loveland to be exact. Um, they do sell this kit. Uh, it's about, depending on the brake style you want to go with, uh, it's roughly about $1,000. But it comes with everything needed to make this work. And they pack it well. And it's heavy. The box, box number one. Wait, so it weighs 70 pounds. Box number two weighs 30. All right, we got brake lines and stickers. That's the most important part. Check it out. Ooh, buddy. Got brand new brake lines. Let's check out the stickers. All right, got a front range off road sticker. Put it right in the headlight. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> New bearings and races for the new hubs. We got all the gaskets and everything else, and um, seals. This is a machined IFS hub to accept the factory Asian manual hub locks on this. So everything will work as it would. Um, it's just better set up, a little wider now with the new setup. I assume that this is a hub as well. And it is. So you'll see us put those together. We got rotors. Got more packing. Tell who we're in the park. <laughs> this is off of a 
03 FJ Cruiser to 2000 to 2006 Toyota Tundra Rotor. So this is a bigger brake kit than what we have on there. It has bigger calipers. Uh, so obviously more stopping power for 37 inch tires. We also come with new brake caliper mounts that will mount on there. More rotors. All the hardware needed. Studs, wheel studs. More hardware needed. And new brake pads. So, with this, big old massive uh, brake job, comes the fun of trying to figure out how it goes together. No, I'm, it, this, this will not be hard. No instructions needed, but if you look at the website, they do have some, some, uh, Useful information. <laughs> um, so, we need to get started. And the first thing I do is watch Ashley take 37 inch tile tires off. <laughs> We have the brackets for uh, his front end. We have taken apart the old hub rotor assembly that was originally on there. This is the new one. It comes with everything you need. So uh, I went to a place and had the hubs or the, the studs pressed in. Uh, you can either do that with a hammer too. Just gotta be careful as to how you're doing it. But Make sure you press those. You can't put this straight on the ground because the studs are longer than the flat or the flat mating surface there for your locker or for your manual hub. So you need to make sure you have something here that can hold this up if you're going to hit it in with a hammer. Anyways, hubs there. Set. So they have this piece welded on here, and they just got to basically tack welded in three places, and it's. I have no idea why they needed to put that on there, but anyways, <laughs> if you're going to run your brake calipers in the back, like we are, uh, the holes only line up right there in that position. If you put it anywhere else, the holes don't line up. If you're going to run the caliper in the front, flip it over and the holes will only line up in that position and nowhere else. So. Either which way you're going to run it, you're going to have to choose to cut off ears 
one side or the other and that's so the bolts for the caliper for the new caliper can get uh, past those uh, there's millions of ways maybe not millions there's lots of ways to do it I think we're just going to take a grinder with a cutoff wheel and just go through each uh, and kind of clean them up we will end up running the caliper to the back something like that and that's where we are from now. Thought that you should know I've been going solo Want my love, baby, earn it Yeah Dancing on my own See if you can follow Got me feeling alive Watch me go So we ground down the ears of the back side here. Next time, before you uh, grind this down, cover up the spindle so that uh, we don't get metal shavings in we there. We don't get metal shavings everywhere kind of mess that up but the nice thing is grease is pretty forgiving hub end on a solid axle so in comparison to this old hub with the rotor behind it and that 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 would have mounted there you can see that it actually pulls pulls it out and I know I'm not holding this exactly right but you can see that it pulls it out so And that's the reason you want to go to this style is because you can see here where the tire has been rubbing into the coils. And that will eliminate it. All right, let's finish. Installing the studs and the dowel pins. I got the dowel pins in, just like the other hub had. Uh, the kit comes with new studs. Um, they are ARP studs, so they are better than probably your stock studs. The old nuts thread on to the new studs. Um, because I don't want these studs to come out ever, really, I've put them with red Loctite on the threads and then it's a 12 millimeter I hold a wrench on the one nut put the gun on the other and I tighten both of those down so now they're holding on to each other and then I go until these start turning without the stud turning then I know it's bottomed out now I put the wrench back on that stud and back the nut off and take the other nut off. So, showing you one. I thread that on just by hand. 
so it's on. I don't try to bottom it out because I don't want it to to uh, get messed up on the on the stud itself. Hold the wrench on the back nut, socket on the front nut, tighten. Now that they're tightened, then I can take this and run it in. Now, if you saw the the nut started turning, but the stud didn't, which means I'm bottomed out. So again, hold the nut with the wrench. Take the socket, put it on the front nut, take it off, and unthread it. And it's just that easy. Now, two more to go. So now, if I ever need to change a rotor, there it is. Comes right off, comes right on. We have the caliper still to put on. Um, I'm going to do something different with the brake lines. That was kind of Mickey Mouse when it was originally done. But, I also wanted to show the difference in this versus that. So, about a half inch all the way around bigger so going to the bigger brakes got bigger rotors got bigger calipers more stopping power so for a rock crawler that's good okay Give me those pieces. So you can see basically how close, and that's not with any weight on it. So when he has weight on the front end, that coil touches. Versus the new setup. <laughs> Dan can fit his whole hand in there. <laughs> so even with he's got weight on the front coils, it'll be way better. Felix has got new hubs. <laughs> yeah, so Felix got new big brakes. They're tundra brakes. <laughs> Felix is going to stop on a dime now. All right, so we've got the tire on. We've got everything on. We haven't done the brake line yet, but that's kind of moot. So I just wanted to kind of point out that now from the coil to the edge of the tire, and this is pretty rough, but five inches to there. And then if we come over this side, which has not been done, coil to the tire is, oh, we're gonna call it an inch and a half. So, you can see how much now, looking at it, how much wider that side is going to the IFS front hub setup. Brakes are bigger. Uh, everything works better and you get to, big news is you get to remove the spacers, which is safer. So, there it is in a nutshell, Front Range Off-Roads uh, build. Just got to do it to one more side, but boy does it make it easier when you go to this setup. A little bit of work, but the 
payout sure seems like it's going to be excellent. All right, so now you can kind of see we have, basically it's three inches from the coil over to the inside of the tire. That's rough guess. Uh, now the tire's got plenty of options to move without hitting the coil, to flex, and uh, again, still have a good space in there. My whole hand is there. Oh, and it looks great. So this is with him having weight on the front end here. You can see how much room we have. So great. Now Felix's track width is the same with the IFS rear. I say his tires are a little turned right now, but. Yeah, but. You can see that he's roughly the same distance. All right, so we're back on Felix another day. We are working on actually putting in the brake lines. Um, so we're looking at putting them right here and moving this back a little bit because it's a little bit closer to the header. You can see the header right there. Um, and we're thinking about putting it right here. And then I have long enough brake lines that are going to, um, he's at full droop right now. I don't know if you can see, it's kind of, kind of far back, so. Um, but yeah, here we go.